Hello folks, welcome to the next episode of Differential Equations. I'm your host Rifat Bari, Harvard Exoplanet Researcher, Perfect ACT Scorer, and I have a perfect GPA here at the City College of New York where I study physics. In the last episode, we checked out spherical coordinates, which you need not only for differential equations, but also vector analysis. Today, we're going to use our previous knowledge of spherical coordinates to find the surface area of a sphere. So let's go ahead and do that. So our goal is to find the surface area of a sphere. So here's a sphere, and we want to find its surface area using differential equations and vector analysis. Now, we know already that the answer should be this. If your sphere has a radius of a, then its surface area should be 4 pi a squared. Now, the whole point of doing this example is not to figure out what the surface area of a sphere is. No, it's to verify that our method of finding surface area of a general surface uh, works. So let's see. Let's see how we're going to do this. So if you have a general surface, let's say your surface is uh, z equals z equals f of x, y. So I have a general surface, okay? And I want to find its surface area. So how am I going to do that? Well, as usual in calculus, what we're going to do is uh, slice and dice. So we're going to we're going to chop it up. Let me see if my, okay. So we've sliced up our surface into a bunch of tiny, tiny rectangular patches. They're not perfectly rectangular. They're just approximately rectangular. For example, this slice in reality probably looks like some curved patch. But here it looks, in our approximation, it looks like a rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a very clever trick, right? Uh, so here's our trick. Our trick is we have our surface, right? So here's our surface, z is equal to f of x, y. And this surface, param uh, if you parameterize this surface, then we can describe it as r of u comma v. Just like we parameterized, remember, the sphere before in terms of two, two parameters, we can parameterize any general surface in, in terms of two parameters. Let's call them u and v. Now, if I hold one of these parameters constant, let's say I hold u constant, so this, um, this, uh, this surface is defined on some domain, okay, some, some domain, let's call it d, okay, and this is the surface itself. So we have the domain d and the surface s, and what, my, uh, what I'm doing is I'm mapping this domain to the surface. So what's happening? What's happening is that, let's say I have a, a kind of constant, a kind of constant line here uh, on my domain. We'll call that u equals u naught. The reason why I'm doing this is because u equals u naught is keeping one of my variables constant. And when I keep one of my variables constant on the domain, what do I get on my surface? I don't get a line. What do I get? I get a space curve. Right? Something like that. That's what I get. I get a space curve. Okay? So this is the result of u equals u naught on the surface itself. Now let's hold, remember, this is a surface, so there are two parameters. So now let's hold the other parameter constant. Okay, and so I'll call that line V equals V naught. Uh, so how does V equals V naught look like on the surface itself? Well, it looks like another space curve. So we'll call this space curve V equals V naught. And so now look where they intersect. Pretty shoddy illustration here, but you can see that my two space curves intersect at one point. And at this one point, if I find out the tangent vector to my space curves, I can figure out what the cross product is here, right? I can take the cross product of these two tangent vectors. Let me, let's say that this, uh, this one is r, r sub v. So I'm taking the, uh, the partial derivative of my parameterized function in terms of one of the parameters v. And let's say this is r sub u, same thing, but I'm doing it in terms of the other parameter. And then if I take their cross product, I'm going to get I'm going to get a third vector which is mutually perpendicular to the other two, right? So it's just like uh, just like this, right? I have three fingers, each of them is perpendicular to the other two. So this one is perpendicular to this, this is perpendicular to this. So you get the story. So the main idea here, let's let's erase all of this. So the main idea is that I have my surface, and I hold one of my parameters constant, 
that's u equals u naught. I hold my other parameter constant, that's v equals v naught. I take the derivative of the partial derivative of my parameterized function with respect to one of the variables, do the same in the other direction, and I take their cross product. So this is their cross product, r sub u cross r sub v. And then what am I going to do? The whole point of taking the cross product is to get a little patch. The cross product, the magnitude of the cross product, gives me the area of this little patch. And so what I'm going to have is the surface area is going to be the, the double integral of the magnitude of my cross product, r sub u cross r sub v, times dA. So times a little change in du and a little change in dv. So that is the formula for surface area that we are now going to employ to find the surface area of the sphere. So notice that r sub u cross r sub v is none other than the normal vector. The normal vector, if I unitize this vector or normalize this vector, I'm going to get uh, the normal vector here. So I can just write this. Uh, the surface area over some surface is nothing more, nothing more than the magnitude of the normal vector at uh, at a certain point times the uh, over over the domain over which that surface is defined. Okay, so this is the formula. This is the formula that we're going to employ in the next episode of differential equations to find the surface area of this thing. This is the this is the magic formula. All right, folks. Thanks for watching.